boat has a nice mahogany transom on it. It's either a Honduran mahogany or a genuine uh, South American mahogany. Uh, I don't believe the boat originally had a mahogany transom on it, although it could have. And you can see where the protective layer is started to peel off the uh, stain along with it. Uh, as I get to looking down through here, you can see some Dutchmans in the wood down here along the planking on her hull where somebody had took a, a kind of a caulking like you'd put in a caulking gun to sew window frames with and uh, instead of actually fastening it back like it should have been, uh, somebody had done that. You can also see where uh, right here where when they put the protective layer of uh, coating over it where it sort of dripped down and just kind of ran. It's not bad, but this is going to be coming off anyway. I've got a feeling that the wood on the transom here has been rebolted simply because of the different size bungs that you have. And there's one right here, and I'll put a picture of it up on the camera. There's one right here that is exactly an inch, and then you have one right here that's half an inch, and then you have some over here that are five eighths. And like I said, that's not something typically like you would have seen when she was originally built. Now, I think that the reason that it was refastened was because she's got sprung planking along the bottom here. And I haven't been inside yet, so I'm going to have to look at the wood on the inside. So it could be two layers, but this is not an overlay transom. If it were an overlay over the original, the planks on the transom would extend over the planking on the side planking of the hull. So if this is indeed a multi-layer transom, then one layer has been taken off and a new one put back on. And the reason for it being bolted back through may be because they might have been having some trouble with the corner posts. And, and if they've had trouble with that, I'm going to tell you this going to be the same thing on the inside. And when I get up inside, I'm going to be looking at the corner posts, the vertical frames, and the framing along the bottom that catches the end of the planking. So first, what I want to do is just tap on this bottom plank a little bit here because it's got some checking in it. And I don't know the condition of this plank, but it does have checking in it. And you can tell the difference in sound because when you bang on something that's solid you get a real solid sound but you bang on something that's duller you get a kind of an empty sound and that's the checking on the inside and when you tap here you can hear that it's solid against the framework but when you tap down here it's not solid it's sprung out and tap there it's the same thing it's not solid one of the bungs has come out right here but you tap up here and it's still solid Tap up there, it's sprung, it's a little bit sprung out right there, I already know that. And then tap right there, it's solid, there solid, and there it's solid. But you can hear the checking when I just hear that. Sounds real dull, whereas you get up here and it's against the frame, and this part sprung out. But I am impressed with actually very impressed with the planking here on the bottom at the side is still tight up against the framing. It's tight here on the side, but it's not tight here running through the transom. That's interesting. So when I get up in here, that's going to be really interesting to look at and see how much it is sprung out and see how many layers is down through here. But uh, you can tap along through here and you can hear that it is solid. The wood is still solid. And it is solid up against the framework. Now that right there, part of that may have come loose. That right there may have. Let's check this one up here. Okay, that's one continuous sound right there. So that is that one's up against the framework. It's up against the framework. I'm not going to do every single one of these. That'd take too long. But especially, I'm going to do this one. So when you get down here, 
and the chine, where it curves. That's called chine. This is typically where you see a lot of wood boats spring loose at, and then just down towards the keel in general, towards the gunnels. That's where you see a lot of them actually spring loose. Like I said, especially on the chine, and that's because it's, it's, a, it's the rounded part of the boat. Um, but if I tap on this, still solid against the framework. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I got some of her teal coated bottom paint on there. Interestingly enough, I don't know, if, well, I don't think you can see it. I've got a picture of it, I'll throw it up on screen. Her bootstrap wasn't originally black, it was red. I think her hull may have been red at one time too, because if you look here, there's red paint. And all along the hull, underneath the Hill, bluish lagoon colored paint and that could be for one of two reasons one she actually had a red hole or number two second reason second reason could have been what a lot of old timers used to do what they what they would do is do one bottom uh, paint color and then put another on top of it and the reason for that is is so that they would know that when that top layer started to come off, they'd know that it was time for another layer to go on. Pretty neat little old boat building trick. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, when I do it, her hole, I'm actually going to paint her hole back to the same color. And uh, be nice just to kind of keep that original to her. Yeah. Now what I thought from outside that was bolting holding the transom planking on coming through here is not. The reason why those plugs are as big as they are on the transom is probably because they were having a hard time pulling those things down hard flat because of the curvature of the transom. So what they did was drill a much bigger hole and sunk the screws in and it increases the size of the bung head so that they can easily pull the screw more back out because it feels smaller than with the curvature of the transom it would have the screw would have embedded itself in the sides and it wouldn't be as easy to get out but in here uh, this is in fact a double transom and what I mean by that is is that it has two layers so my suspicion of it being one layer taken off and another layer replacing it was correct. Boat building. It's hard. I'm just going to take one more look at the bottom planking of the transom. I'm really displeased with it. It seems so hollow. Like it's got checking badly in a vertical sense or it's got some uh, softness on the other side. I'm going to probe it with my knife to see what kind of condition it's in. I'm going to probe it with my knife here to see what kind of I'm going to probe it with my knife here to see what kind of condition it's in. see that right there here I can pull the knife back and forth pull the board back and forth the planking with my knife so I'm thinking the best thing to do with this is unfasten the planking from the framework from what it already is and then replace it and then fasten it back up through with the new transom what I'm doing here is just scraping the ends of the bottom planking on the transom to show that these are the annual rings of the wood grain here and they're going through the wood this way which makes it quarterly sawn if it appeared this way it'd be slab sawn but this is all quarterly sawn uh, this is a mix though 
this is the niche right here, but it's a quarterly song except for that piece. So I've stepped up forward and I'm up near the stem end here at the bow at the bow end of the boat. And this being the keel, this is the bottom end of the stem itself. Now this piece right here where there's a seam, this is called a grop. And it's basically the, the bottom section of a large wooden knee that's inside here that's bolted through the stem through the knee and bolted through the um, um, forward end that's bolted through the keel to the knee. And the knee just happens to extend past what we call the rabbit line where the flanking fastens to the keel. And I can't really inspect the bolting right here, but I do have something to say about it. I noticed that uh, this seam here is hardly opened up at all, and it's a very tight joint. And this joint between here and the grot is very, very tight compared to what you might expect to see from a boat this age. So it's either had boat bolts replaced, or it's been really maintained, or it's just such a really good piece of wood to begin with. And it's just had success over its lifetime. And there's some uh, things to point out about the base end of the stem. You can see the checking. This is still really solid. There's just some checking in it. Just some up there. And this is the part of the trees where you get checking problems. Now, there are some things to point out here about the base end of the stem here. And that it, you can hear the checking in part of it. This is the heart of the tree. It's the very center of the tree. When you have the center in what they call a box heart, you'll have the checking problems. And it really isn't in bad condition. And you can almost expect it to happen when you have what they call a heart in it. In it. But there are some things to consider here. And, it, and it's uh, about taking the boat in the southern waters. These areas are not perfectly solid. They have checks and spaces. And it sounds a little foul. And hollow. And it, it's not soft. It's just got checking, which is what got what gives it that hollow sound. This does not have checking. Uh, this piece here, however, does. Um, and if this boat was to stay in southern waters for too long of a time without proper bottom paint, bottom paint, excuse me, or without a lot of fiberglass cloth or some copper, or or just maintain the uh, bottom paint really well so the worms aren't allowed to get into the wood here and cause uh, trouble. And what I plan to do about the bottom paint, they make, and hear thunder, uh, <laughs> I think every time I made a video is a damn rain, but uh, what they do, this company has went and made this type of bottom paint and it has copper powder in it and it's real, real thick and you lather it on it's good for 10 plus years keeping worms and everything out and since i do plan on taking the best selling of soon to be orca to florida and live down there uh, that's going to be really good for me to put that on there and basically what it is what them people what the company's done they've made a basically a liquid metal that hardens because it has copper powder in it and what the old timers would actually do is they had put mixed paprika in with the bottom paint because the worms don't like it. Now, in this position right here, <clears throat> where you see the, the joint between the graph and the stem where it starts to fade behind the plane, there should be a stop water right here. And it's very possible that when it was built, that stop water was put up a little higher than what I would have put it because I don't see it doesn't mean a lot to me but I believe there's a stop water right in here and it's hard to tell the condition of the stop water it's a round piece of cedar that is driven in a hole that interrupts the seam between the grout and the stem and it's also got another one down at 
this end down here of the grout, which I'm probably not able to see either. And it's very hard to determine the condition of the stop water since it's being covered by the plank. And in this type of situation, I would recommend people unfasten the plank and spring them out so they can inspect the plank and then replace them if need be. It's nice and solid, nice and solid, nice and solid up in here. And this is the place where you hear the deadness, and that's from the uh, checks, not from being soft, but it's from checking. So uh, that's going to conclude uh, part two of the boat inspection. Uh, next we'll be examining the kill in the next video and uh, where she had her garbage removed and we're going to inspect the hole too. So uh, thank y'all for watching.